so I have my phone plugged back into my computer and uh, this is my uh, fat partition you see it says fat 32 there this is what has been created uh, since uh, we installed the rest of the open recovery and all of that. You'll also see I have a Dropbox that I use to move things back and forth. Okay, so in the open recovery directory now that you have, remember you didn't have that before. The first thing we did was we put these files on the card. All the rest of it Android created in system uh, open recovery caused some of them to show up as well. So we're going to go into the open recovery directory on our card and there is an updates folder. Inside there are three uh, other updates. You can ignore those. Uh, but we're going to take the ones uh, that are in the XDA forums uh, post. And again, there are links to those uh, in the description of the video. And I'm just going to drag and drop them into our card. Cam update version 3 and version 4. All three of them are now on the card. So, uh, we go back to our phone, and uh, I'll show you how to load them. Now let's load our updates. So we'll turn the phone back on, and we are going to use one of our handy new features, which is to hold down the power button, and uh, we're going to go into recovery. Yes, it will. Now, there have been a lot of questions about other types of uh, updates, such as themes and whatnot. Um, I personally don't use themes except for whatever Cal Powers decides to put in his next release, which I'm usually pretty okay with. Um, you would use the do the themes just the same way as you would do any other update. You put the zip file in your update directory and then load it in the way we're about to do here. So, uh, now that we're in... We will go down to, uh, sure enough, apply updates, and uh, you'll notice all of our updates are here, and uh, we'll start with the CAM update. We'll select it and uh, uh, confirm installing, yes, and it loads, and it's very quick and painless. Then we'll go down to V3 update, and again, we will select to upload that, and then 4, and yes. Now, uh, from here, I am actually going to go back and I am going to wipe the Davit cache. And I'm going to wipe the regular cache as well. Uh, if you're having problems with this and you've done this over and over again, you can wipe the data and do a factory reset as well. Uh, anytime you run into a problem and you just don't know what to do next, uh, come in and do that. Uh, it's probably going to be a good thing to do. So now we can reboot and go back into the system. And now we're rebooted. Okay. So we're going to go back in and uh, kind of let the system settle here for a minute. Uh, the next step is uh, actually uh, to go in and I'm going to show you now you may not have set CPU. Why don't you have it? Go get it. It's not an expensive app. It's only like a dollar and it gives you all sorts of fun benefits. So one of the benefits you're going to get is being able to actually look at the info screen. Uh, this is where we kind of transition over into learning how to do fast boot. Uh, here you'll see that the in the info screen it shows swap cached and then it also has swap total and swap free. All of those numbers are zero. They're zero right now because we don't have swap enabled because we haven't gone in and done a fast boot yet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, bring my phone over to the computer and uh, we're going to do fast boot. We're back to uh, the computer and uh, I've got my phone plugged in. I've selected uh, portal and tools as my USB connection type and uh, I've turned on USB debugging. Uh, from here uh, we're going to do a couple things. Uh, first of all we are going to open up the Android SDK directory on our C drive and then go into tools. Now if I've lost you, if you don't have any idea what this means right here you need to stop watching this video and go install Android SDK on your computer and learn how it works. Uh, I don't have time in this video to teach you how this works. It's assuming that you already have this set up. 
Okay, so we're going to go in and uh, we are going to find that FJ Falcon uh, kernel file that we've downloaded. Again, a link to this will be in the YouTube description. And I'm going to open it up and I am going to extract this file. Uh, and then I will move it. It's a boot.img file into the tools directory. And uh, we'll just put it in here. Okay, so now we have that in the Android Tools directory. So we are going to go into Handy Dandy DOS and go back and go to Android SDK and then to Tools. Now uh, from here, again, I'm assuming that you already have ADB and uh, SDK and all of that set up correctly. Uh, just to show you uh, that I have it, uh, that is my device. And so I'm going to do ADB uh, reboot boot loader. And that has sent a command to my phone that has rebooted the phone into fast boot mode. And uh, I will pause the video here for a moment and put a picture of what that looks like. Now, when you type in fast boot devices, now your phone should show up. But if you do ADB devices, it won't show up. So from here, we do fast boot, boot, and then boot.img, or whatever the name of the file is. And off we go. Now, once that's done, your phone actually reboots. And so I'm going to go back to the phone after it reboots. Okay, here's the phone uh, now that we've rebooted after doing the fast boot. And I'm going to go in and demonstrate for you how to know that you're in fast boot. If you go to set CPU and go to the info, you'll notice that now you have swap cached number and you have uh, swap total and swap free so these numbers represent the fact that the swap is currently being used uh, so from here um, it's up to you whether or not that that benefits you or if you want to continue doing that if you don't want to do that and you were to reboot your phone then the phone will go back to using the regular kernel I guess I should uh, show you also in the settings since we did a fast boot uh, you can see the kernel now very specifically says uh, the FJ Falcon uh, at desktop number four and it is still the uh, Cal it says v3 optimized now so uh, he has uh, updated that with the v3 so that's pretty much uh, what we have here in terms of what the phone looks like um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, one last time just run a quadrant while we wrap this up. Uh, one thing that we did not talk about uh, is the uh, app to SD or link to SD. Uh, I personally uh, am not using that uh, right now. If you did want to use that, uh, it would be very easy to go into the EXT partition and put an app directory on your card and that app directory would then allow you to uh, move apps uh, it actually Froyo will automatically move apps that are capable of doing so onto the card if you're going to use link to SD uh, you put a link to SD instead um, there's also uh, other things that you can do such as putting a Dalvik cache directory on the card uh, again these are things that I am not in any way shape or form using right now because I don't believe that they are improving performance uh, so uh, you'll notice that my quadrant scores are adequate. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have 1388 now uh, compared to the 1359 we had earlier. Um, I, I'm right now, as it stands, I have nothing on my EXT partition. So um, 
that's kind of how I'm leaving it as it stands. Uh, now, down the road, if I run out of room on my card, uh, then I can uh, change my mind and put that app directory on and move the apps over. So, uh, as it stands, uh, this should give you exactly what you're looking for. Uh, I'm sure we'll have questions and whatnot, and feel free to ask them either on the XDA forums or uh, don't hesitate to drop me a line or a comment. Um, so there we have it. Uh, if there's anything I missed or anything you need, uh, be sure to drop me a line. This has been Reverend Kyle with yet another uh, video tutorial for uh, pumping up your XT720.